Hello, welcome to our first topic on Java. Before I get into anything about Java syntax or, or how to program it, I want to uh, preface with why are we using studying Java at all. There's kind of two categories of reasons for this. Uh, the first that I'll talk about is, is pedagogical, meaning uh, using Java because it is, is useful for the things that we're trying to learn. Uh, and so one big part of this is that as you progress through CS classes, one important goal is to deepen your understanding of computers and computation and, and what is going on uh, both underneath and how to use them to accomplish cool stuff. And uh, when we're thinking about deepening our understanding, if you're coming from CS 111, you've used Python, uh, and in fact, Python is typically implemented in either C or Java, two other programming languages, uh, and these languages expose more detail about what the computer is doing underneath than Python does. Python is uh, a great language for a first CS course uh, because it hides a lot of these uh, details that we don't always need to care about. But uh, as, as folks taking CS201, you are going to deepen uh, your understanding beyond that. And in fact, Carleton CS department has two 200-level uh, courses that kind of uh, delve into, into this in, in two different directions. One is this course, 201. We're going to use Java, and we're going to focus on how data can be efficiently structured at kind of a, a high level. M208, uh, Introduction to Computer Systems, uses C and focuses on uh, low-level details of how computer systems actually function. Um, so first reason to use Java, we're going to deepen our understanding of computers. Second is uh, you're going to learn potentially a, a second programming language. So uh, Python in, in 111. Uh, Java in, in 201, why not use the same language for both? Well, there's actually value uh, in going through the process of learning a second programming language because you begin to see uh, the, the, kind of the concepts that are shared among uh, different languages, and this makes it easier and easier uh, to pick up a, another language if you're in a situation where, oh, you need to, to code in something that, that you haven't used before. Uh, uh, another reason to use Java is to prepare you for future CS coursework, and this ties back to deepening your understanding. But one important aspect of Java is that it's going to force you to think and be a lot more explicit about the type of data uh, that your program is working with. And getting used to thinking in this way is just going to be very useful for, for future CS courses. Uh, and so using Java, um, of serves a real benefit that way. Um, now, no programming language is, is perfect, and Java certainly has some weaknesses. Uh, and as we, we go through these first few topics uh, uh, introducing Java, you're going to see that there are a lot of exceptions and kind of things that don't follow the overall uh, uh, pattern. And this is just this is a, a fact of life that we're going to have to accept. Um, and there are a variety of reasons for this. Um, the language was, was first created in the 1990s and has evolved a lot since then. Um, uh, some of this is, is Java, is kind of, uh, the designers of Java incorporated some additional complexity that allows programmers to write faster programs, but you know, it's, it's more complicated as a result. Um, and there are some unfortunate decisions that were made early in the design of Java uh, and uh, like any software that is used, piece of software that is used by a lot of people and that you want to change over time, you're often stuck with bad decisions that were made early on because all the people using your software, you're going to break uh, what they're doing if you change, uh, change things that they're, they're assuming about. Um, uh, about the programming language or the operating system, whatever it is. That's kind of the pedagogical side. The other bucket of reasons for using Java is that it's uh, extremely relevant um, in kind of real world uh, programming in a variety uh, of contexts. Um, it's among the top three uh, most used programming languages, depending on how you measure uh, JavaScript. Uh, 
Um, Python and C also show up in, in that top three. A note about JavaScript, it has literally no connection to the Java programming language. It was named JavaScript because at the time, Java was even more popular than it is now, and the people who made JavaScript wanted to capitalize on that popularity, and so they called their new language JavaScript. No relation whatsoever. And in fact, this has led to uh, legal action, and uh, if you see in uh, documents produced by, by Microsoft um, or other tech companies that aren't Oracle, the folks that own Java, um, you'll see them referring to JS rather than JavaScript because uh, you, there's, there's no relation. It turns out you can't, can't really do that. Um, what is Java used for? Well, it's the, it's the programming language for, for Android devices, and there are lots of those. I have one myself. Um, it's used for a lot of finance applications, so folks writing uh, algorithms uh, to trade stocks, for example, that's often done in Java. Uh, Java is heavily used in web infrastructure. So, um, if you want to, if you uh, uh, want to have a website that uh, people can use, that also kind of can get more resources as more people log on, and then uh, shut down those those resources if it doesn't need them. Uh, this is something that, that Amazon and, and Microsoft and Google, a service they all provide. Um, Amazon's is called Amazon Web Services or AWS, and this uh, sort of software, this web infrastructure, uses a, a lot of Java. And there's also a fair amount of scientific software that is, that is written in Java. So it really has a kind of a broad set uh, of real-world applications. And there are also some, some kind of real-world benefits to writing software in a language like Java. Um, as a compiled language, it offers some advantages. Um, compiled meaning that before you can run your program, uh, you need to uh, use something called a compiler to translate your Java code into uh, uh, another format. And this compiler can detect this compilation process. You compile your code uh, kind of once, and then you can run the compiled code any number of times. Uh, this com compiler program can detect a lot of errors in your code. Uh, and so uh, if you're coming from, from Python, pretty much everything that isn't a syntax error, uh, you only find out about when your code actually gets to the point with the error. Uh, in, in Java, some amount of errors can be detected by, by the compiler before the code is ever run, and the compiler also has an opportunity to, um, uh, to, to make the, your, your code faster uh, as part of the compilation process. So enough about uh, uh, the motivation. Let's dive right into uh, the, the basics of Java. And I want to start out by talking about types. Um, and so uh, in Java, Every, uh, to, to, to declare a variable, uh, it needs to be given a type. You need to tell Java what kind of data that variable will hold. So um, I'm going to uh, start up a program called jshell uh, in the terminal. And this is a kind of an, an interactive uh, uh, Java interpreter uh, is, is just a way to kind of play around with stuff and, and will be will be useful for for looking at, at what we're talking about so Java has six uh, what are called primitive types so these are kind of the most fundamental types of data uh, uh, in Java they are uh, booleans true or false uh, characters single letters which are uh, the type is called char uh, integers, int, uh, long integers, which are uh, the type is written long. And so what is, what is the difference between an integer and a long integer? Well, a long integer uses twice as much memory. Uh, and by doing so, it can represent a uh, exponentially larger range of values. So uh, uh, integer to long integer is use more memory, be able to represent bigger numbers. Um, 
Uh, and for uh, decimal numbers, for real numbers, a float and double have the same relationship. Um, double uses twice as much memory and can represent uh, a much bigger range of values. So how does, how does using these variables actually look? Um, well, if I want to say uh, my integer equals 7, uh, JShell is going to complain about this. It's going to say you can't find my int equals 7 uh, because the statement my int equals 7, it doesn't have a type uh, associated with my int. I haven't told Java what type of data my int is, uh, and so this doesn't count as declaring the variable uh, in such a way that, that Java can find it. But uh, so what I need to say is I first put the type of data that the variable holds and then the name of the variable, my int equals seven. And so now I have uh, declared and initialized a variable, my int, uh, that equals seven. Uh, I can also have uh, have I can declare a variable without initializing. So I can say int uh, my default int, and you'll see that it's given the given it the value of zero because, as you see in this column over here, all of these six types have a default value, a value that they will hold. And so if I um, Here we go. If I ask JShell to show me the value of my default int, it's indeed, it's indeed zero. Um, and so uh, I can then, after declaring it to be zero, I can then reassign it to something else. So now I have, I have made it five. And uh, all of these other primitive types work the same way. Um, so if I want uh, a variable that's, that has the value false, I would need to say uh, boolean b equals false. So I have a boolean variable. And uh, there are a number of operators, many of which I expect will be familiar to you, uh, that Java provides that can be used with these primitive data types. So there is the, the uh, arithmetic operators that you would expect. So I can say my int plus uh, my default int, add 5 and 7 together to get 12. I can do my int uh, times 34, get 7 times 34. I can do uh, uh, comparisons, so numeric comparisons, my int uh, greater than 3, that's true. Um, my int equals equals my default int. Are my int and my default int uh, equal? Uh, this is false. They, they, are, they are not equal. Um, to, uh, and then kind of above these, uh, they're, they're listed here in order of precedence, which is the order in which they are, uh, they occur within an expression. So, um, uh, like you're, you're probably used to from, from math class, multiplication and division happen before addition and subtraction, which in turn happen before any numeric comparison. So um, uh, the other ones here, uh, there are a couple um, up at the top here, these unary increment and decrement that are uh, different from, uh, well, that, no, different, that are not available in Python. Uh, so in Python, you might say uh, a variable plus equals uh, uh, one to add one to the current value of the variable and, and update it. So this will take my int from uh, seven to eight. Java lets you make that even slightly shorter by saying my int plus plus, which will um, uh, evaluate to the current value of my int and then add one to it after it. So now if I look at the value of my int, it's been updated to, to, to 9. And um, similarly, you can do um, uh, my int minus minus 
it returns the current value of 9, but if we look at the value afterward, it has been decremented back down to 8. The last ones here are these uh, logical operators, and uh, if you've used Python, these are all kind of spelled out in uh, as words in Python and or not. And in Java, they use uh, punctuation uh, in instead. So I had my, my Boolean B. I could say not B. Uh, so not false gives me true. Um, if I say uh, not B um, and B, uh, that will that will be false, uh, right? That that um, to to the and, and is only true if both uh, both operands are true. Um, whereas not b or b that will be true. One of these is true, so true or false is true. All right. So some things to be aware of uh, in Java. Um, First is that uh, division will, if both um, uh, operands to division are integers, the result will be an integer. So 7 divided by 2, for example, will give us 3. Uh, if we want the division to give us a real uh, number result, one of the two operands to division needs to be a, be a real number, meaning that one of the two operands needs to be uh, at least one or two, could be both, needs to be a float or a double. So if I have 7.0 divided by 2, that will give me that will give me the real result. So what if I had um, my int, uh, what if I set up a, another variable int uh, x equals 2, and I have my int, um, uh, and I'll make my int back to 7, I had my int divided by x, that's going to give our, uh, 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 give the, the integer result, what if we wanted that to be a, uh, a real value, well, uh, we can, um, uh, we can do that by casting one of the operands to a different type, specifically to uh, a float or a double. So what do I mean by that? Uh, in Java, we can tell we can tell it to convert a variable from one type to another by putting the type we're converting to in parentheses. So if I say double my int divided by x, this says convert my int to the type double and then divided by x. And so this now is the equivalent of going from 7 divided by 2 to 7.0 divided by 2. Because if I just look at what does it say when I convert my int to a double, that's 7.0. Uh, the uh, uh, one note about uh, the character type is if I have rc is the character a. Uh, these are actually just integers that correspond to uh, a given character. So uh, as the example here shows, uh, if I did uh, C plus, uh, if you do like A plus B, um, it gives you the, the integer, integer result um, of the, uh, uh, just like if I did C plus plus one, turns out C is is uh, the the letter A is ninety seven, uh, so ninety seven plus ninety eight gives us the the one ninety five. All right. So other type of data I want to um, uh, note here is strings. So strings are not one of these six primitive types. Uh, they are what's called an object. And Java makes this distinction between uh, primitive and primitive types and objects. And there's a link here for kind of 
a lot more detail about what this means. Um, but uh, the, the, the key things to keep in mind now are that object names are capitalized. So uh, if we want a string variable, string s equals hello there. Notice that the, the, the type name, right, we still need to, to give our variable a type, but its type is, is this uh, is string with a capital S that tells us that this is an object rather than one of our primitive types, which are all lowercase. And uh, another important difference is that primitive variables, they store the actual value uh, that that variable has, which is kind of intuitively what, what we would expect. Uh, but object variables are references, uh, which means that, that our object variable s here actually stores the memory address, the location in the computer's memory uh, where this string hello there is stored. And in Java, these are called references. In C, these are called pointers. Um, and uh, this has some, some implications that will uh, and, and we'll see one of those in, in, in a little bit. So, uh, to prevent uh, the video uh, from getting too long, I'll uh, cut this off here uh, and uh, pick up in another video with uh, an example of an actual uh, Java program.